Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at how to use partitioning for multiplication, or what some people refer to as the grid method. Now, as a quick refresher, partitioning is when we split a number up into its constituent parts. For instance, the number 59 is made of a 9 and a 50. Okay, so it's when we split, it, uh, split a number up into its units, its tens, its hundreds, basically whatever parts it's made up of. Now, the grid method is a really useful method for multiplication for a couple of reasons. One, it prevents us ha having to worry about exchanging. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't enjoy exchanging much when it comes to doing formal multiplication, this might be the method for you. Two, a lot of learners find it a more effective way of multiplying together two or three digit numbers. So if you have struggled when it comes to doing formal multiplication for multiplying together two digit numbers, again, you might find this a slightly easier method. Now, I always start off the grid method by just drawing my grid straight off. So I'm going to draw my grid here. And what this is for will become clear in due course. Now, I'm going to start my calculation by splitting up the numbers, by partitioning the numbers. So I'm going to have 50 and 9 across the top here. And down the side here, I'm just going to have my 4, because this number cannot be partitioned any further. Okay. Now, I'm going to separate these numbers on the grid a little bit more. And what I've created are two quadrants. So one quadrant over here and another quadrant over here. And now we can get to work. So I'm going to change colour to actually do my calculations. We'll start with the easiest quadrant, which would be this one here. All I do is I multiply these two numbers together. So 4 times 9, the answer is 36. Okay, so I've got 36 in that quadrant. Next, I'm going to do 4 times 50. Now, you might be thinking, I don't really know how to do 4 times 50 easily. However, it is exactly the same as doing 4 times 5. But the answer is going to be 10 times bigger. Because 50 is 10 times bigger than 5 is. So the answer to 4 times 5 is 20. So the answer to 4 times 50 is 200. So there we go. 4 times 50, 200. Now, all I do is I add my two answers together. So I've got 200 plus 36. 236 is my answer there. Okay? Now, let's try this with a slightly more challenging calculation. So, this time we're going to look at two two-digit numbers being multiplied together. So I've got 28 and 35. So I'll start again by drawing my grid. There we go. Now, 28 is made up of a 20 and an 8. And the 35 is a 30 and a 5. I'm going to separate these again now so that I have four quadrants. Okay, now, I'll start with the easiest sector, the easiest quadrant, which would be this one down here, okay? The reason I think that one's the easiest is because it's got a single digit number above and beside, okay? So all I need to do here is 8 times 5, the answer to which is 40. So that's this quadrant, this sector taken care of now, okay? Now, the two next easiest ones are these two here, all right? Uh, I'll take this one to start with. So, 5 times 20. Well, again, I might be thinking, can't really do that easily. However, it's exactly the same as 5 times 2, but my answer will be 10 times bigger, because 20 is 10 times bigger than 2 is. So, 5 times 2 is 10. To make it 10 times bigger, we can just add a 0 in the end in this case. Can't always just add a zero, that doesn't work with decimal numbers, but we can get into that at a later stage. Okay, next sector. 
8 times 3. I know that, uh, sorry, 8 times 30. I know the answer to 8 times 3, 24. But 30 is 10 times bigger than 3 is. So my answer will need to be 10 times bigger. Then lastly, this sector here. Now, we're multiplying two two-digit numbers together here. So I can start off just by thinking, well, it's going to be, I'm going to have the answer to 3 times 2 in this somewhere. So I know that 6 is going to appear in there. Okay, I'll actually move that over one, 6. However, 30 is 10 times bigger than 3 is, and 20 is 10 times bigger than 6 is. Therefore, my answer when I multiply them together is not going to be 10 times bigger, it's going to be 100 times bigger. Because when we do 10 times 10, the answer is 100. When we do 30 times 20, the answer is 100 times bigger than 3 times 2 is. So in total, we have 600. Okay, so we've got the answers for each quadrant. Now all I need to do is add them together. So we've got 600 plus 240 plus 100 plus 40. All zeros there. 8 in this sec uh, section, so it's 4 plus 4, 8. 6 plus 2 is uh, 8, plus 1 is 9. 980 will be our answer to this calculation.